What is happening, everybody? In today's episode of the Flock Fitness Solo Podcast, I am going to be addressing intensity versus volume and what you should be focusing on. What's happening, guys? This is a solo podcast from Sean LaFlock of Flock Fitness, and I wanted to take the opportunity to sit down and give you my thoughts on a specific topic, which is volume versus intensity. And I think I have uh, a unique perspective on this because not only have I been coaching CrossFit for over 12 years now, uh, but I've... Uh, have an athletic background, uh, Division One sports. I've also excelled in triathlons, so endurance sports as well. And uh, you know, I've I've coached a variety of different athletes, from strength and explosive athletes to endurance athletes, and everything in between. And uh, more specifically, now my uh, forte is in the ageless athlete. Uh, we're talking about the the individual who has um, had some kind of athletic background, but now is in the um, fitness for life phase of their their journey. So some of it is undoing all of the stuff that they did when they were younger. So uh, some of the movement, mo uh, uh, some of the mobility restrictions that they have. Um, others, it might just be getting more balanced. So maybe they were very enduring when they were younger and now they're looking to uh, switch over more into explosiveness, uh, strength, power, um, or vice versa. And uh, this topic came across the table to me and was a discussion uh, with my fiance Lauren uh, because it came up in as a topic from uh, Street Parking, who's headed up by Miranda Oldroyd and uh, her husband, um, who's uh, I think uh, Julian Alcaraz is her husband. So this has been hotly debated and a lot of uh, dogma is out there when it comes to whether or not we want to be doing intensity or volume. And uh, I definitely side in the center. Uh, you should be doing both in an ideal situation. Uh, you should be doing longer and more enduring stuff, um, but also some shorter high intensity things. But when you talk about the context of the ageless athlete, I actually side to one more side than the other. And let me give you some background on this. So the ageless athlete is a professional first, um, maybe even a um, parent first. So they have pretty large stressors within their, um, their body, within their environment, uh, whether it is career or family. Uh, and the body perceives that stress in one way, right? Pumps out stress hormones, cortisol and epinephrine. What happens in exercise in terms of adaptation, uh, major physiological adaptation is you're putting a stress on the body and your body has to adapt. So what happens is, is that when you exercise, you create a stress on the body, the body releases stress hormones, and then you have to accommodate for those stress hormones. That's kind of what we're looking to get out of exercise. And as a byproduct of those stress hormones that are released, we have to metabolize fat. We have to um, potentially uh, increase muscle synthesis. So you're, you're growing muscles, uh, mitochondrial density. So your, your, your capacity to create energy increases. Like these are all the positive stresses, positive responses of the stress from exercise. So remember, the exercise itself doesn't do anything. It's your body's, it's signaling the body to start doing things that are going to adapt to the stress, which is exercise. But here's the issue. If your body is unable to accommodate the stress and adapt, you're actually going to be breaking down the system. Imagine you're in a car and you know that your car can go 100 miles per hour, okay, if you, if you treat it properly. And then all of a sudden you redline it in first gear and you're going and going and going. You're not actually going any faster. You're just asking more of the, the vehicle that you're, you're in. And when I work with ageless athletes, that's actually more of the camp that most of them fall into is that they're pumping so much stress into their body 
that the only way that they can get any kind of adaptation is be- that by which when they do exercise, it has to be so stressful that it finally sends a signal to the body to accommodate for that stress. So here are two options. We can create a signal that's so loud that the body finally adapts to it, or we can turn down the volume of all the other stressors so that it takes less of a intense signal of exercise to create the adaptation. Neither of these is the right answer, but I want you to start thinking about where you lie and why it is that you're doing what you're doing. Because I have experienced not only firsthand personally, but through hundreds of clients that I've worked with, that the reason why they have to go so hard all the time is because it's the only thing that their body responds to because their life is so out of whack and so stressful as is. And I'll dive deeper into this, that because of the lack of ability for your body to uh, the, the increases in lifestyle stressors, uh, and specifically in this instance, family and career, because those are such big stressors on the body and the mind that we need to turn that stuff down in the clients that I personally, I needed to turn those things down in order for me to actually get a stimulus from exercise. And that has been the case for almost 99% of the athletes that come to me, um, in different, you know, in different, um, uh, amounts, some kind of need to step away completely in, in certain aspects. Others just need to like, okay, maybe taking five minutes a day, but there hasn't been a person who I've come across who can't do, uh, without a little bit of de-stressing their, their lifestyle stuff to start getting the adaptations from exercise. So if you are spinning your wheels frustrated that you, um, aren't getting adaptations from exercise, specifically muscle synthesis, so muscle growth and body fat, metabolism, so fat loss, uh, it's not intensity. I'm going to guarantee if you're watching this video right now, you go pretty hard and you go harder than most people go. Most likely the reasons why you're not adapting to the exercise that you're doing, it's not because of the lack of intensity or the complexity of workouts or the fact that you can't do a bar muscle up. It's because you're so stressed elsewhere that your body can't adapt to any more stress. So that's a freaking tough pill to swallow. And again, I'll personalize this. That was me. Like I was going, you know, 40, 50 hours a week of work on the floor in a gym. Uh, Also training one to two hours a day, four to five times per week. And when you're younger, you can get away with that stuff. But for the ageless athlete, it it just starts accumulating very quickly uh, in a negative way. So I literally had to do like no exercise because any more stress on the body just kept pulling out of the well stuff that I really didn't have. And it was becoming deleterious to me. And I have the proof in the pudding when you look at my, my blood work and how like beaten down metabolically I was, you know, uh, sex hormone function of an 80 year old man, systemic cortisol issues, insulin resistance, And things that all, like when you look at um, objectively, you go, oh, wow, this person's not healthy. And when you do that for a prolonged amount of time, that's where those stressors lead to disease. And when you look at me walking down the street, you go, oh, wow, that person's healthy. They're fit. But that's why you can't rely on people on social media to tell you whether or not you're healthy or not or what health is. Because most people have no clue, including myself. Like I'm still learning and I'm at this a lot. But if a person doesn't have like a a broad perspective and at least some basic scientific knowledge and physiological knowledge of how the body works, you're not getting the whole answer. And again, I'm not sitting here and professing that I know the answer, but I'm just, I guess posing these questions to those who are listening to start having you think about the things that you do and why you do them. And 
I saw benefit in this myself in terms of asking these questions. And I see benefit in the individuals that I work with because at the end of the day, what, what do you want? Like, what's your goal? And I think that's a great question to ask somebody is what is your goal? Is your goal to look lean? Is your goal to have better energy? Is your goal to get stronger? Is your goal to be good at CrossFit? So if your goal is to be lean and to have lean body mass and to look good naked, do you have to be good at CrossFit? Do you have to be good at functional fitness? Do you have to run marathons? No. (laughs) No, you don't. But we're sold this idea that you have to do all those things in order for you to look good. And it's not the case. I'm exercising less now than I've ever have in my life. I accumulate maybe two hours of exercise uh, a week. Uh, I'm active. You know, I, I, I'm active every day. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a dad and I'm, you know, very into raising my son. But I'm not training like I was even two years ago. And I'm definitely not training like I was when I was competing in the sport of CrossFit. But I would say health wise, I'm much healthier now when you look at objective measures. And if you want to look a little bit more subjectively, body composition, I have much higher lean body mass. My gut health is better. My thyroid function is better. My sex hormone function is better. I sleep better. My relationships are better, but I'm not as good at CrossFit. So this is not also a bash on CrossFit because I think there are some people that, that need, if, if your goal is to find a fitness methodology, that's going to give you enough of a stimulus to actually force adaptation. CrossFit is pretty much the last, (laughs) your last refuge. If you've done all the things in your life and you still aren't getting an adaptation to exercise, CrossFit's going to do very good for you. But the problem is, is that what most people find is that after beating themselves up with CrossFit for long enough, and specifically the intensity at, at, at which CrossFit does, because I, I know not all CrossFits are created equal. If you're doing like, you know, um, uh, specific programs that are built toward ageless athletes. And, you know, uh, you look at the Marcus Phillies of the world and the training think tanks of the world, they're doing a really good job. But even there, I really think that it's, it's, um, it's propping up bullshit that people are telling to themselves because they're trying to keep going with all this other stuff that's going on. And then they're trying, like there's a, there's their houses on fire and to put it out there, they have a garden hose Uh, That's like, you know, um, um, functional bodybuilding from Marcus Philly or training think tank. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to help. And, 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 and like, if you really, really want to change your life, really what it's going to take is assessing the house that's on fire, determining why you're so stressed and then breaking down the components from there. And and most of those things are uh, nutritional, um, Lifestyle factors like work, family, sleep. If you take care of like this 80% thing, you won't need to be so like hard pressed to find intense exercise to get results. You're going to feel better. Your joints are going to thank you. You're going to have more energy to do other stuff. Um, your body composition is going to improve. But this is hard. This stuff's hard to do. Exercise is actually really easy. Trust me, I've done it for many years, decades. Exercise is easy when at the end of the day. Like going in, going hard for 20 minutes and then going home, not hard. Journaling your food consistently, that's hard. Um, Cooking consistently, that's hard. Like going to a functional medicine practitioner and following a protocol for three months, like not feeling better, that's hard. Uh, And again, if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm not getting what you're, you're, you know, I'm not talking to, 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 to you. (laughs) You may not be there yet. You might need three or four more years of, of, of metabolic training to beat you down to the point where you go, Oh wow, I'm going to start listening to this. But trust me, like there's not a, Oh, I finally got there. (laughs) It's that's, that's a fallacy. Realistically what it is, is 
you've got to come to a point, you go, what do I want? And what is the easiest way to get it? And um, again, I'm, I'm not here to bash any fitness methodologies or claim that mine is correct. I'm just kind of telling it like it is and saying that for the individuals that I've worked with and myself included, that people think that they're not going hard enough in exercise is, is, is just bullshit. It's you're having to go so hard for exercise to get a result because all the other stuff isn't where it needs to be. The lifestyle factors, nutritional factors, the sleep factors. If you took as much energy as you put into your exercise, as you did all of those things, you get the results that you would want. I promise you that. That is 100% something I can hang my hat on. That is, an, uh, that is a universal truth. It is not because you don't exercise hard enough or with enough intensity. Now, consistency, that might be different. Like if you exercise once a week, you know, and you're not active, now we have a conversation. If you're a sedentary person and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, wow, I don't need to exercise, you're not in the same boat. I'm not talking to you. If you're the person who's working out four, five, six, seven times a week and you're not seeing the results that you want, it's not because your exercise isn't intense. It's not because you're not following the fanciest training program. It's because all this stuff, and oh, by the way, I hate to say it, genetics as well. If you've been fighting your entire life to get a six pack, it's probably not going to happen. Without maybe some, maybe some assistance, you can do it. You know what I mean? Um, pharmacologically, you can, you, can, you can get there if that's what you want. And if you, that's ultimately what you think is going to bring you happiness, who am I to stop you? Even if you try it and you know then it doesn't bring you happiness, great. Now you understand that it didn't. So kudos to you. Like you were brave enough to try that. But kind of rambling on here a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm going to wrap this up here. But I thought this was a worthwhile topic to kind of dive into a little bit and give my perspective on since it is the new year and people are kind of browsing the internet looking for the hottest, newest fitness methodology or get fit quick scheme. Um, that's just not the case, um, especially if you're trying to do this for the long haul. And uh, I guess the last tangent I'll get into is when you look at people online who are like have six packs and are shredded, don't assume that they're healthy. If you go online and someone is, is selling a weight loss program or a, um, a fitness program and they're walking around with like 6% body fat, by the way, which is insane, like legitimate 6% body fat, especially for females, one, they're probably not healthy and they probably have very little resiliency or two, they're on gear. So they're on steroids, which again, which is fine. But if you're going to be upfront about that, that's cool with me. But if you're saying, oh, it's because of this fitness methodology or because of my diet program, that's why I'm lean. If they're not bringing up the fact that they're like a physiological outlier or a genetic outlier, or they're on gear, um, I would be very, very, very skeptical. And I, I'd actually be less skeptical if that person brought those things up and was very upfront about that. So just as, a, as an aside, like if someone came on and like, listen, man, I am a genetic freak, but these are the things that still work for me because yada, 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 then I would be much more likely to like trust them. But if they're like, well, it's all because of my diet that I have an eight pack, like, no, like you probably have a six pack just laying around doing nothing. So be wary of people online that are telling you that it's th this simple process of just eating this thing and you're good to go because it has to be individualized. If, if, if you're looking for the results that you think you, you're, 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 you want, it must be individualized because there's no one size fits all in life. You have to look at all the components that we talked about previously. And then from there, diagnosing exactly what those lowest hanging fruit are and then finding a sustainable um, objective, measurable way of addressing those things. And, um, yeah, if, if, if you're looking at those things, great. Um, if not, um, be honest with yourself of why you're doing something. I'm doing it because everybody else is doing it. I'm doing it because I have no, I've, I, I don't know. That's a great answer. I don't know what to do. So I just do this stuff. Um, but if you're doing it, for, for other reasons, et cetera, you know, obviously it, it's your own, it's your own story. So, um, yeah, I, I want to know about you guys though. And, uh, this is where you help me and I need your help because I want to know what questions you guys have 
as far as the things we just discussed, um, blood work, nutrition, exercise protocols. Uh, I want to know what you guys don't know about because I have a wealth of knowledge in these areas and know what to look into and research in order for me to find the answers. So in the comments below, leave your questions because I will take those questions. Or if you want to shoot me an email, Sean at flockfitness.com of any questions that you might have uh, that you'd like to be, for me to answer in one of these little I don't know, pod solo podcast. I would love to, like, I'd really, really like to help some people, um, you know, find some of the perspective and answers that they might be looking for. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you reach out, it, it would, would help a lot in terms of creating great content that you guys would want to listen to and, and potentially watch. So that's all I have for today. Uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, uh, to stay up to date on all of the latest content. Um, if you haven't already, uh, sign up for the newsletter, go to flockfitness.com. You can sign up for the newsletter so you can get all the content sent to you and not rely on algorithms to make sure that you get this information to you. I'm Sean the Flock of Flock Fitness. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.